big thank you to Sweet Heat for sponsoring this video. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I make this shelf, but it's not just any shelf, folks. It rises and lowers. First off, let's talk about why I wanted it. This was the corner of my shop before this shelf. This was a shelf I built about three years ago, but as you can tell, I have outgrown it. When I started thinking about expanding it along this wall, I instead looked up above my in-the-wall hardware storage and thought it sure would be cool to utilize this area. A permanent shelf would require a ladder every time I wanted something, and nobody has time for that. But what if the shelf could be lowered down when I did want something and then raised back up when I wanted hardware? If you want to build your own, I do have a set of plans and a parts list of everything I use. The main body is just a piece of plywood with a 2x4 attached to the back side. On this 2x4 I attach some hooks or anchors. This will later be where the cabling grabs onto the shelf. Now in the four corners, let's attach some rollers. These are some simple garage door brackets. You can actually see them here on my shop's garage door, except these have a hinge on them so that the panels can bend as the door moves up and down. The ones I'm using for this project have a stationary base, but an adjustable roller holder. I measured and set each one to the proper height, which later will fit within the tracks to keep this thing from falling off the wall. For the track, I actually built my own tracks from wood. I grabbed the hardest wood I had in my shop that was long enough, which in my case is oak, and made it into an L shape. I set this on my workbench and attached another piece of oak to turn the L into more of a Z. You'll see more clearly in a few seconds, but this will give me a flange to attach this track to my wall. To attach it to the wall, I started with the left. I would hold it in place and first threw in just a single brad nail. This is going to hold it just long enough for me to put a level on it and plumb it up. I only had a four foot level in my shop, so I moved to the bottom and then the top and placed a few brad nails as I straightened it out. Once it looked good, I came back with screws. Again, pre-drilling to make sure I didn't split the oak. Next, I repeated the process with attaching the right track in the same way. Okay, let's move to the top and attach some pulleys. Which are these guys here? These will be what the cable will go up to before veering right over to the hoist. I used some lags to go into my wall here. Then, it probably isn't needed, but why not be safe? I added a ledger board. A lot of the force on the pulleys is gonna be vertical because it's gonna be reaching down and pulling up on this shelf. So to directly oppose this, I ran screws up into this ledger board. This is in addition to the lags going into the wall. Okay, next, let's go back to the shelf and attach a few components. First is what is called a thimble, hooked onto the anchor point on the two x four. This is so the wire rope has a track to be placed in and looped back onto itself. To secure it, these little guys called wire rope clamps are tightened down onto both the lead in and lead out strands. Oh, any hardware in this assembly with a nut on it, I made sure to apply some tank bond thread locker to a few threads first. It's a fast drying coating that creates a tight seal that will absorb shock and vibrations, which prevents fasteners from unintentionally backing off. Don't worry though, any fasteners you treat remain adjustable, removable, and reusable. Let me pause and thank this video sponsor, which is Sweet Heat. Winter is coming and round patio heaters are coming out. If you're sitting around it, then it's 360 coverage is great, but it's an absolute waste if you're only on one side of it. And that is where Sweet Heat reflectors come in. This is an attachment that can be installed or uninstalled in less than a minute and causes no damage to the heater. It does dry fold, so it's easy to store away when not in use. This reflector will focus the heat generated by the heater to the side that you're sitting on. And this means a few great things. You don't have to place the heater in the center of the room. Instead, it can be off to the side and unobtrusive. With the Sweet Heat reflector on, it increases the heat range by 70%. By allowing me to focus the heat and direct its heat to one side, I can also turn down the dial while still getting plenty of heat. And this means I can save on propane. Sweet Heat says it can save up to 60% on propane, which really adds up and quickly pays for the reflector. I'll leave you a link to Sweet Heat in the description if you wanna check them out. Okay, now the shelf can be set into place. It is large and awkward, so help will be needed. 
Jacob and I brought it in from the bottom, just tilting it so that the top roller would slip into the track, then straightening it out vertical. So the idea is the length of cable will extend up from the shelf to this pulley, and a second from the other anchor to this pulley. Then both will be fed through the gap, which was left in this right track, and then connected in the corner to a hoist. I fed the cable up from the pulleys from both anchors, but now I needed to join them into one. Neat. What I'm doing here is exactly what a blind does. It uses multiple strings to pull up the thing evenly, but then with components, the many are turned into one. In the shelf setup, the component I used is called a turnbuckle. This will allow me to attach both cables to one side, then shoot one cable from the other. This will also give me the ability to make small micro adjustments later on after everything is installed and I'm doing the final tuning. The last component to add is the hoist itself. Now I wanted my shelf to get as close to the ceiling as possible when it was lifted up, which means I either needed to mount my hoist over to the side or below it, and I chose the side. The mounting bracket is a simple DIY one I made from some square tubing I had laying around. The holes are drilled in locations to match the stud location of my wall. Now this thing is kind of heavy, but it's nothing unmanageable. I screwed a two x four temporarily to the wall to give myself a rusting shelf to set the hoist on as I put the lags into the stud. Once I was up there, now I could connect the turnbuckle component to the hoist and test it out. Jacob held the shelf up high enough for the bottom roller to be seated in the track. Then I pushed the button on the hoist and hoped for the best. Right now it isn't going all the way to the ceiling because the hoist comes with a stop block attachment and I hadn't adjusted it properly yet. That's cool. But it worked well enough that the next step is personally what I think any fun loving person would think is the logical next step. Jacob and I took turns hanging from it and going for a ride on the flying shelf. Can I don't think OSHA would approve. Okay, okay. Next is adding whatever shelving is needed to hold whatever is gonna be stored here. But the cool thing about this project is you can customize it to hold just about anything as long as the total weight is under the capacity of the hoist and all of the components you use. That is a big key to pay attention if you build this. Not only what the hoist is rated at, but also make sure that every single component also has the same rating. One weak link in the chain will cause it to fail. Since I have a CNC, I use pretty much the same design as my old rack, but just expanded on it. If you wanna build your own, I have a set of plans and a parts list of everything I used here. While I'm using this one for my finish, I also built shelves for storage of all of my decked boxes. These are boxes that go in my deck drawer system in my truck. I organize each box with a different assortment of tools, such as two have my electrical supplies, two have my plumbing, one is my everyday carry for truck needs. When I'm not using that box, I like to take it out and store it somewhere else so that I can keep the drawer system open to store power tools or other things like chairs. Instead of just having me stacked up randomly on the side of my shop, I built a custom shelving unit for them. Now, when I'm going to tap a certain job, it's easy to outfit my truck quickly with the needed tools. I would absolutely love to know what you would use a shelf like this for, whether it be in your garage or your shop or somewhere else. I think it's very versatile and easy to customize. Don't forget, I do have a set of plans over on my website, not only for this project, but also many, many more. I hope that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on whatever I'm building next. That's not going to hold it. You want to put in a screw for me? Will it? Holy crap, it holds it. One Brad <laughs> Neal. I'm shocked. Good, good job, Brad Neal. <laughs>